The Queen of Sheba Musnad, is a figure first mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. In the original story, she brings a caravan of valuable gifts for King Solomon. This tale has undergone extensive Jewish, Islamic, and Ethiopian elaborations, and has become the subject of one of the most widespread and fertile cycles of legends in the Orient. Modern historians identify Sheba with the South Arabian Kingdom of Saba in present day Yemen. The Queen's existence is disputed and has not been confirmed by historians. Topic. Narratives Topic. Bible The Queen of Sheba Hebrew, Malekatsiba Malkatsaba in the Hebrew Bible, Koine Greek, Basilisa Saba in the Septuagint, Syriac, Milkt Shbi Giez, came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices, and very much gold, and precious stones." 1 Kings 10 verse 2. "...never again came such an abundance of spices." 10-10, 2 Kron, 9-1-9 as those she gave to Solomon. She came, "...to prove him with hard questions," which Solomon answered to her satisfaction. They exchanged gifts, after which she returned to her land. The use of the term hiddo or riddles 1 Kings chapter 10 verse 1, an Aramaic loanword whose shape points to a sound shift no earlier than the 6th century BC, indicates a late origin for the text. Since there is no mention of the fall of Babylon in 539 BC, Martin Noth has held that the Book of Kings received a definitive redaction around 550 BC. Virtually all modern scholars agree that Sheba was the South Arabian kingdom of Saba, centered around the oasis of Marib, in present day Yemen. Sheba was quite well known in the classical world, and its country was called Arabia Felix. Around the middle of the first millennium BC, there were Sabaeans also in the Horn of Africa, in the area that later became the realm of Aksum. There are five places in the Bible where the writer distinguishes Sheba, spound I. E. The Yemenite Sabaeans, from Seba, spound I. E. The African Sabaeans. In Ps. 72-10 they are mentioned together. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. This spelling differentiation, however, may be purely factitious. The indigenous inscriptions make no such difference, and both Yemenite and African Sabaeans are there spelt in exactly the same way. The alphabetic inscriptions from South Arabia furnish no evidence for women rulers, but Assyrian inscriptions repeatedly mention Arab queens in the north. Queens are well attested in Arabia, though according to Kitchen, not after 690 BC. Furthermore, Sabaean tribes knew the title of MQTWYT, high official. Makata or Makweda, the personal name of the queen in Ethiopian legend, might be interpreted as a popular rendering of the title of MQTWYT. This title may be derived from ancient Egyptian Makit, protectress, housewife. The queen's visit could have been a trade mission. Early South Arabian trade with Mesopotamia involving wood and spices transported by camels is attested in the early 9th century BC and may have begun as early as the 10th. The ancient Sabaic Awam temple, known in folklore as Marim, the sanctuary of Bilki, was recently excavated by archaeologists, but no trace of the Queen of Sheba has been discovered so far in the many inscriptions found there. Bible stories of the Queen of Sheba and the ships of Ophir served as a basis for legends about the Israelites traveling in the Queen of Sheba's entourage when she returned to her country to bring up her child by Solomon. Topic. Christian Christian scriptures mention a «queen of the south» Greek, Basilis Anotu Latin, Regina Austri, who «came from the uttermost parts of the earth» i.e. From the extremities of the then known Christian world, to hear the wisdom of Solomon, Mount 1242, LK, 1131, the mystical interpretation of the Canticles, which was felt of supplying a literal basis for the speculations of the allegorists, makes its first appearance in Origen, who wrote a voluminous commentary on the Canticles. In his commentary, Origen identified the bride of the Canticles with the Queen of the South of the Gospels, i.e., the Queen of Sheba, who is assumed to have been Ethiopian. Others have proposed either the marriage of Solomon with Pharaoh's daughter, or his marriage with an Israelitish woman, the Shulamite. The former was the favorite opinion of the mystical interpreters to the end of the 18th century, the latter has obtained since its introduction by Good 1803. The Bride of the Canticles is assumed to have been black due to a passage in Cant, 1-5, which the Revised Standard Version 1952 translates as, I am very dark, but comely. 
as does Jerome Latin, Nigra Sum, Sed Formosa, while the new revised Standard Version 1989 has I am black and beautiful, as the Septuagint Greek. Malina Imi Kaika. One legend has it that the Queen of Sheba brought Solomon the same gifts that the Magi later gave to Christ. During the Middle Ages, Christians sometimes identified the Queen of Sheba with the Sibyl Saba. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish. According to Josephus Ant. 8–165–73, the Queen of Sheba was the Queen of Egypt and Ethiopia, and brought to Israel the first specimens of the balsam, which grew in the Holy Land in the historian's time. Josephus Antiquities 2 .5 represents Cambyses as conquering the capital of Ethiopia, and changing its name from Seba to Meroe. Josephus affirms that the Queen of Sheba or Saba came from this region, and that it bore the name of Saba before it was known by that of Meroe. There seems also some affinity between the word Saba and the name or title of the kings of the Ethiopians, Sabako. The Talmud Bava Batra 15b insists that it was not a woman but a kingdom of Sheba based on varying interpretations of Hebrew MLKT that came to Jerusalem, obviously intended to discredit existing stories about the relations between Solomon and the queen. Baba Batra 15b Whoever says Makath Sheba 1 Kings 10, 1 means a woman is mistaken. It means the kingdom of Sheba. This is explained to mean that she was a woman who was not in her position because of being married to the king, but through her own merit. The most elaborate account of the queen's visit to Solomon is given in the 8th century, Targum Sheni to Esther, see, Colloquy of the Queen of Sheba. A hoopoe informed Solomon that the kingdom of Sheba was the only kingdom on earth not subject to him and that its queen was a sun worshipper. He thereupon sent it to Kidder in the land of Sheba with a letter attached to its wing commanding its queen to come to him as a subject. She thereupon sent him all the ships of the sea loaded with precious gifts and six thousand ewes of equal size, all born at the same hour and clothed in purple garments. They carried a letter declaring that she could arrive in Jerusalem within three years although the journey normally took seven years. When the queen arrived and came to Solomon's palace, thinking that the glass floor was a pool of water, she lifted the hem of her dress, uncovering her legs. Solomon informed her of her mistake and reprimanded her for her hairy legs. She asked him three targ. Sheni to Esther chapter 1 verse 3 or, according to the Midrash, Prov. E. 6, Yak, E, section 1085, Midrash ha Hephas, more riddles to test his wisdom, a Yemenite manuscript entitled, Midrash ha Hephas. Published by S. Schechter in Folklore, 1890, pp. 353 at Seq. Gives 19 riddles, most of which are found scattered through the Talmud and the Midrash, which the author of the Midrash Ha Hephas attributes to the Queen of Sheba. Most of these riddles are simply Bible questions, some not of a very edifying character. The two that are genuine riddles are, Without movement while living, it moves when its head is cut off. And Produced from the ground, man produces it, while its food is the fruit of the ground. The answer to the former is, a tree, which, when its top is removed, can be made into a moving ship. The answer to the latter is, a wick. The rabbis who denounce Solomon interpret 1 Kings chapter 10 verse 13 as meaning that Solomon had criminal intercourse with the Queen of Sheba, the offspring of which was Nebuchadnezzar, who destroyed the temple. Comp. Rashi ad -Lok. According to others, the sin ascribed to Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 7 at Seq, is only figurative, it is not meant that Solomon fell into idolatry, but that he was guilty of failing to restrain his wives from idolatrous practices Shab. 56b, the alphabet of Sirach avers that Nebuchadnezzar was the fruit of the union between Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. In the Kabbalah, the Queen of Sheba was considered one of the queens of the demons and is sometimes identified with Lilith, first in the Targum of Job 115, and later in the Zohar and the subsequent literature. A Jewish and Arab myth maintains that the queen was actually a jinn, half human and half demon. In Ashkenazi folklore, the figure merged with the popular image of Helen of Troy or the Frau Venus of German mythology. Ashkenazi incantations commonly depict the Queen of Sheba as a seductive dancer. Until recent generations, she was popularly pictured as a snatcher of children and a demonic witch. Topic: Islam. 
The story of the Queen of Sheba in the Quran shares similarities with the Bible and other Jewish sources. In a letter, Solomon invited the Queen of Sheba, who like her followers had worshipped the sun, to submit to worship Allah. She calls the letter noble. In an act suggesting the diplomatic qualities of her leadership, she responded not by brute force against his people, but by sending a gift to Solomon. He refused the gift, declaring that he had no need of it. She then visits him at his palace. Before she arrived, Solomon had her throne moved to his palace with the help of one of his subjects, who was able to move the throne faster than the blink of an eye. Solomon had her throne disguised. She entered his palace and exposed her leg mistaking the polished glass for a pond. Recognizing things were not as they seemed, she submitted to Allah 27-22-44. Muslim commentators such as Al-Tabari, Al-Zamakshari, Al-Baydawi supplement the story. The queen's name is given as Bilki Arabic, Blis probably derived from Greek Palakis or the Hebraized Pilegesh, concubine. According to some, he then married the queen, while other traditions say that he gave her in marriage to a tubba of Hamdan. According to the scholar Al-Hamdani, the Queen of Sheba was the daughter of Ilshara Yadab, the Himyarite king of Najran. The Quran and its commentators have preserved the earliest literary reflection of her complete legend, which among scholars complements the narrative that is derived from a Jewish midrash. Topic: <laughs> Coptic The story of Solomon and the Queen was popular among Copts, as shown by fragments of a Coptic legend preserved in a Berlin papyrus. The Queen, having been subdued by deceit, gives Solomon a pillar on which all earthly science is inscribed. Solomon sends one of his demons to fetch the pillar from Ethiopia, whence it instantly arrives. In a Coptic poem, Queen Yesaba of Cush asks riddles of Solomon. Topic. Ethiopian. The fullest and most significant version of the legend appears in the Kebra Nagast, Glory of the Kings, the Ethiopian national saga, translated from Arabic in 1322. Here Menelik I is the child of Solomon and Makeda the Ethiopic name of Bilkis from whom the Ethiopian dynasty claims descent to the present day. While the Abyssinian story offers much greater detail, it omits any mention of the queen's hairy legs or any other element that might reflect on her unfavorably. Based on the Gospels of Matthew 1242 and Luke 1131, the Queen of the South is claimed to be the Queen of Ethiopia. In those times, King Solomon sought merchants from all over the world in order to buy materials for the building of the temple. Among them was Tamron, great merchant of Queen Makeda of Ethiopia. Having returned to Ethiopia, Tamron told the queen of the wonderful things he had seen in Jerusalem, and of Solomon's wisdom and generosity, whereupon she decided to visit Solomon. She was warmly welcomed, given a palace for dwelling, and received great gifts every day. Solomon and Makeda spoke with great wisdom, and instructed by him, she converted to Judaism. Before she left, there was a great feast in the king's palace. Makeda stayed in the palace overnight, after Solomon had sworn that he would not do her any harm, while she swore in return that she would not steal from him. As the meals had been spicy, Makeda awoke thirsty at night, and went to drink some water, when Solomon appeared, reminding her of her oath. She answered, Ignore your oath, just let me drink water. That same night, Solomon had a dream about the sun rising over Israel, but being mistreated and despised by the Jews, the sun moved to shine over Ethiopia and Rome i.e., the Byzantine Empire. Solomon gave Makeda a ring as a token of faith, and then she left. On her way home, she gave birth to a son, whom she named Bain Alechem i.e., Bin al-Hakim, son of the wise man, later called Menelech. After the boy had grown up in Ethiopia, he went to Jerusalem carrying the ring, and was received with great honors. The king and the people tried in vain to persuade him to stay. Solomon gathered his nobles and announced that he would send his firstborn son to Ethiopia together with their firstborns. He added that he was expecting a third son, who would marry the king of Rome's daughter and reign over Rome, so that the entire world would be ruled by David's descendants. Then Bain Alechem was anointed king by Zadok the high priest, and he took the name David. The first-born nobles who followed him are named, and even today some Ethiopian families claim their ancestry from them. Prior to leaving, the priest's sons had stolen the Ark of the Covenant, after their leader Azarias had offered a sacrifice as commanded by one God's angel. With much wailing, the procession left Jerusalem on a wind cart led and carried by the archangel Michael. 
Having arrived at the Red Sea, Azarias revealed to the people that the Ark is with them. David prayed to the Ark and the people rejoiced, singing, dancing, blowing horns and flutes, and beating drums. The Ark showed its miraculous powers during the crossing of the stormy sea, and all arrived unscathed. When Solomon learned that the Ark had been stolen, he sent a horseman after the thieves, and even gave chase himself, but neither could catch them. Solomon returned to Jerusalem, and gave orders to the priests to remain silent about the theft and to place a copy of the Ark in the temple, so that the foreign nations could not say that Israel had lost its fame. According to some sources, Queen Makeda was part of the dynasty founded by Zabesi Angabo in 1370 BC, with her grandfather and father being the last male rulers of the royal line. The family's intended choice to rule Aksum was Makeda's brother, Prince Nurid, but his early death led to her succession to the throne. She apparently ruled the Ethiopian kingdom for more than fifty years. In the Ethiopian Book of Aksum, Makeda is described as establishing a new capital city at Aziba. Edward Ullendorf holds that Makeda is a corruption of Candace, the name or title of several Ethiopian queens from Meroe or Seba. Candace was the name of that queen of the Ethiopians whose chamberlain was converted to Christianity under the preaching of Philip the Evangelist Acts chapter 8 verse 27 in 30 AD. In the 14th century, Ethiopic version of the Alexander Romance, Alexander the Great of Macedonia Ethiopic Mekedwan is said to have met a queen Candake of Nubia. Historians believe that the Solomonic dynasty actually began in 1270 with the emperor Yekuno Amlik, who, with the support of the Ethiopian church, overthrew the Zagwe dynasty, which had ruled Ethiopia since sometime during the 10th century. The link to King Solomon provided a strong foundation for Ethiopian national unity. Ethiopians see their country as God's chosen country, the final resting place that he chose for the Ark, and Sheba and her son were the means by which it came there." Despite the fact that the dynasty officially ended in 1769 with Emperor Ayaus, Ethiopian rulers continued to trace their connection to it, right up to the last 20th century emperor, Haile Selassie. According to one tradition, the Ethiopian Jews Beta Israel, Falashes, also trace their ancestry to Menelik I, son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. An opinion that appears more historical is that the Falashas descend from those Jews who settled in Egypt after the first exile, and who, upon the fall of the Persian domination 539 BC on the borders of the Nile, penetrated into the Sudan, whence they went into the western parts of Abyssinia. Several emperors have stressed the importance of the Kebra Nagast. One of the first instances of this can be traced in a letter from Prince Kassa King John IV to Queen Victoria in 1872. Kassa states, "...there is a book called Kebra Nagast which contains the law of the whole of Ethiopia, and the names of the shums governors, churches and provinces are in this book. I pray you will find out who has got this book and send it to me, for in my country my people will not obey my orders without it." Despite the historic importance given to the Kebra Nagast, there is still doubt to whether or not the queen sat on the throne. Yoruba The Yoruba Ijibu clan of Ijibu Ode, Nigeria, claim that she was a noblewoman of theirs known as Oloi Bilikasu Sungbo. They also assert that a medieval system of walls and ditches, built sometime around the 10th century, was dedicated to her. After excavations in 1999 the archaeologist Patrick Darling was quoted as saying, I don't want to overplay the Sheba theory, but it cannot be discounted. The local people believe it and that's what is important. The most cogent argument against it at the moment is the dating. In art Medieval The treatment of Solomon in literature, art, and music also involves the sub-themes of the Queen of Sheba and the Shulamite of the Song of Songs. King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba was not a common subject until the 12th century. In Christian iconography Solomon represented Jesus, and Sheba represented the Gentile Church, hence Sheba's meeting with Solomon bearing rich gifts foreshadowed the adoration of the Magi. On the other hand, Sheba enthroned represented the coronation of the Virgin. Sculptures of the Queen of Sheba are found on great Gothic cathedrals such as Chartres, Reims, Amiens, and Wells. 
The 12th-century cathedrals at Strasbourg, Chartres, Rochester and Canterbury include artistic renditions in stained glass windows and doorjamb decorations. Likewise of Romanesque art, the enamel depiction of a black woman at Klosterneuburg Monastery. The Queen of Sheba, standing in water before Solomon, is depicted on a window in King's College Chapel, Cambridge. Renaissance The reception of the Queen was a popular subject during the Italian Renaissance. It appears in the bronze doors to the Florence Baptistry by Lorenzo Ghiberti, in frescoes by Benozzo Gazzoli Campo Santo, Pisa, and in the Raphael Loge, Vatican. Examples of Venetian art are by Tintoretto, Prado, and Veronese, Pinacotheca, Turin. In the 17th century, Claude Lorraine painted the embarkation of the Queen of Sheba, National Gallery, London, Piero della Francesca's frescoes in Arezzo, CA 1466. On the legend of the True Cross contain two panels on the visit of the Queen of Sheba to Solomon. The legend links the beams of Solomon's palace, adored by Queen of Sheba, to the wood of the crucifixion. The Renaissance continuation of the analogy between the Queen's visit to Solomon and the Adoration of the Magi is evident in the triptych of the Adoration of the Magi by Hieronymus Bosch. Literature Boccaccia's On Famous Women Latin, de Mularibus Claris follows Josephus in calling the Queen of Sheba Nicola. Boccaccio goes on to explain that not only was she the queen of Ethiopia and Egypt, but also the queen of Arabia. She also is related to have had a grand palace on a very large island called Meroe, located someplace near the Nile River, practically on the other side of the world. From there Nikaula crossed the deserts of Arabia, through Ethiopia and Egypt and up the coast of the Red Sea, to come to Jerusalem to see the great King Solomon. Oh, Henry's short story. The Gift of the Magi", contains the following description to convey the preciousness of the female protagonist's hair. Had the Queen of Sheba lived in the flat across the airshaft, Della would have let her hair hang out the window some day to dry just to depreciate Her Majesty's jewels and gifts. Christine de Pizan's The Book of the City of Ladies continues the convention of calling the Queen of Sheba, Nicola. The author praises the queen for secular and religious wisdom and lists her besides Christian and Hebrew prophetesses as first on a list of dignified female pagans. Christopher Marlowe's Dr. Faustus refers to the Queen of Sheba as Saba. When Mephistopheles is trying to persuade Faustus of the wisdom of the women with whom he supposedly shall be presented every morning, Gerard de Nerville's autobiographical novel, Voyage to the Orient, 1851, details his travels through the Middle East with much artistic license. He recapitulates at length a tale told in a Turkish café of King Solomon's love of Balkis, the Queen of Saba, but she, in turn, is destined to love Adoniram Hiram Abif, Solomon's chief craftsman of the temple, owing to both her and Adoniram's divine genealogy. Solomon grows jealous of Adoniram, and when he learns of three craftsmen who wish to sabotage his work and later kill him, Solomon willfully ignores warnings of these plots. Adoniram is murdered and Balkis flees Solomon's kingdom, Leopold Sater Sengor's Elegy pour la Reine de Saba, published in his Elegies Majeures in 1976, uses the Queen of Sheba in a love poem and for a political message. In the 1970s, he used the Queen of Sheba fable to widen his view of negritude and Eurofreak by including Arab Berber Africa. Neil Gaiman's 2001 novel American Gods features a character called Bilquis, although there is no evidence in the novel that this character is related to the historical figure. The character is played by Yetide Badaki in the identically named television adaptation on stars. Rudyard Kipling's book Just So Stories includes the tale of The Butterfly That Stamped. Therein, Kipling identifies Balkis, Queen That Was of Sheba and Sable and the Rivers of the Gold of the South, as best, and perhaps only, beloved of the 1,000 wives of Suleiman bin Daud, King Solomon. Explicitly ascribed great wisdom, Balkis, almost as wise as the most wise Suleiman bin Daud, nevertheless Kipling perhaps implies in her a greater wisdom than her husband, in that she is able to gently manipulate her husband, the Afrits and Dajins he commands, the other quarrelsome 999 wives of Suleiman bin Daud, the butterfly of the title and the butterfly's wife, thus bringing harmony and happiness for all. 
Topic film played by Gabrielle Robin in La Reine de Saba 1913, played by Betty Blythe in The Queen of Sheba 1921, played by France D'Elia in Le Berceau de Dieu 1926, played by Dorothy Page in King Solomon of Broadway 1935, played by Leonora Ruffo in The Queen of Sheba 1952, played by Gina Lolo Brigida in Solomon and Sheba 1959, played by Winifred Bryan in Queen of Sheba Meets the Adam Man 1963, played by Anya Phillips in Rome 78 1978 Topic Music Solomon composed in 1748 first performed in 1749 Oratorio by George Frederick Handel The Arrival of the Queen of Sheba From this work is often performed as a concert piece La Reine de Saba 1862 Opera by Charles Gounod die Königin von Saba 1875 Opera by Karl Goldmark La Reine de Sheba 1926 Opera by Reinaldo Hahn Belkis Regina di Saba 1931 Ballet by Otto Torino Respighi Solomon and Balkis 1942, Opera by Randall Thompson Black Beauty 1970, Song by Focus Makeda 1998, French R&B by Chadian duo Les Nubians Aicha 1996, by Khalid Balki 2000, Song by Sidi Nurhaliza Topic Television played by Halle Berry in Solomon and Sheba 1995, played by Vivica A. Fox in Solomon 1997, played by Andrela Blanchette in Lex, Season 4, Episode 21, Viva Lex Ve Vegas 2002, played by Amani Zayn in Queen of Sheba, Behind the Myth 2002, played by Yetide Badaki in American Gods 2017. Topic See also Biblical and Quranic narratives Bilocation Hadramat Legends of Africa Minions Katanite Katabin Te Al-Arz Topic References Topic Bibliography De Lobby, Kizas 1356 AH 262 to 4 Kiss Kizas 1356 AH 285 to 92 G Weil, The Bible The Quran and the Talmud 1846 G Rosh Die Konigin von Saba ALS Konigin Bilki J A H R B F Prot Thiel 1880 524 to 72 M Grunbaum Nui Beatridge zur Semitischen Sagenkunde 18932112121 Littman, The Legend of the Queen of Sheba in the Tradition of Aksum 1904. L. Ginsberg, Legends of the Jews, 3 1911, 411, 4 1913, 143-9, 1928, 288-91 H. Speyer, Die Biblischen Erzelungen im Kuren 1931, R.E.P.R. 1961, 390-9 E. Budge, The Queen of Sheba and Her Only Son Menyelik 1932. J. Rickmans, L'Institution Monarchique en Arabi Meridionale Avant l'Islam E. Ullendorf, Candice Acts 8, 27 and The Queen of Sheba New Testament Studies, 1955, 53-6 E. Ullendorf, Hebraic Jewish Elements in Abyssinian Monophysite Christianity JSS, 1956, 216-56 D. Hubbard, The Literary Sources of the Kebra Nagast Street. Andrews University Ph. D. Thesis, 1956, 278-308 La persecution des chrétiens himiorites au siècle 1956 Bulletin of American Schools of Oriental Research 143-1956-6-10-145-1957-25-30-151-1958-9-16 A. Jam, La Palographique Sud Arabe de J. Pyron 1957 R. Bowen, F. Albright, eds. Archaeological Discoveries in South Arabia, 1958. Encyclopedic Dictionary of the Bible, 1963-2067-70. T. Tamrat, Church and State in Ethiopia, 1972-1270-1527. W. Dom, ed. Die Königin von Saba, Kunst, Legende und Archäologie zwischen Morgenland und Abendland, 1988. J. Lassner, Demonizing the Queen of Sheba, Boundaries of Gender and Culture in Postbiblical Judaism and Medieval Islam 1993. M. Brooks, ed., Kebra Nagast, The Glory of Kings 1998. J. Breton, Arabia Felix from the Time of the Queen of Sheba, 8th Century BC to 1st Century AD 1999. D. Crummy, Land and Society in the Christian Kingdom of Ethiopia, from the 13th to the 20th Century 2000. A. Gunther, ed. K. 
Caravan Kingdoms, Yemen and the Ancient Incense Trade 2005. 